My name is Mike Rosmus. I'm CEO of Agility Video LLC. We're looking at the operator interface of our Smart Catch Video Analytics software set up to do intrusion detection of human beings uh, with a thermal camera. On the right hand side, you see the list of all of the detections that have been made. On the uh, upper left, you see the configuration information, and on the lower left, you see the, a video clip from a thermal camera being analyzed by Smart Catch. Um, the conditions in this video clip are ideal. The clip comes from a FLIR TCX T4390 thermal bullet camera. This camera is the latest evidence that thermal cameras are coming down in price and becoming much more available. It's got a 480 by 360 sensor and it sells for about $1,500 single piece price uh, from the distributor. Now, um, you can see that the H in the box in the, in the view says that our software recognizes a human being. We, we built this clip with four intrusions across the screen at four different distances. And at the end, we put a straight in intrusion from the far distance straight at the camera. Uh, under these conditions, we ran the clip about 20 plus times. And under these conditions, Smart Catch detected every single intrusion for a 100% probability of correct detection. Now let's look at a tougher situation. We're going to show you um, the case where the ground is warm. We set the detection with a camera that has edge enhancement. And that way, even though you can see the figure blends in a lot with the background because the ground temperatures are very similar to the temperatures of the exterior of the human being, SmartCat can still pick it out because it, it has multiple classifiers. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. But we, in this case, we did the same kind of a test. This clip has four intrusions at different distances with a person walking across, and it has a, a intrusion from the far distance directly at the camera. Even in these very difficult conditions, where the figure sometimes blends into the background, Smart Catch will detect the intrusions 90% of the time when this loop is more than 90% of the time when this loop is run 20 plus times. Now let's take a closer look at some of the um, details of difficult detections. We have here one of the detections at night, but in this case, it's still difficult because a person comes in straight at the camera, which is just a white blob to begin with. But, it, but with the camera set up properly, you get the right contra contrast in the front view. As soon as there is enough contrast to show features of the front, Smart Catch can still make a good detection of the human being, even though it was difficult at distance to see the arms and the legs at all. Now let's take a close look at that difficult detection uh, from in the warm conditions. Now, Smart Catch has multiple classifiers. That is, it will look for humans, it will look for noise, you might see an N there, it will look for v vehicles, you might see a brief V. The uh, U classification means an unclassified pixel change. But it did detect the human being on this in this case because it saw the human being, even though intermittently, for about four or five seconds. And because of that, it was able to distinguish. Now, um, with those multiple classifiers, we do a really nice job of false alarm uh, mitigation. This setup that you're actually looking at um, was run on live cameras for about three weeks. There was only one false detection during that time. Um, Multiple uh, problems that might be problems with other analytics, like the willow trees moving in the um, uh, breeze, changing the edge of the shadow, the um, uh, multiple small animals, none of them caused false detections. Now let's talk about the history of Smart Tench. Started as research in NEC labs. They particularly did a good job of detecting humans even when there's modest pixel coverage on the target and when the uh, video is uh, mediocre quality. In 2003, NEC Labs spun it off into a Silicon Valley company called Vidiant Systems. 
they, there was $30 million in investment through 2010. They perfected the long-range perimeter intrusion detection that I've been showing you. They also did a special version that works in metro subways. Um, and the largest is in the Montreal subways. As far as I know, the scale of that, and I'll, I'll tell you more about that in a minute, um, is a unique achievement in that environment. Uh, at the end of 2010, um, Vivian Systems was a fast growing several million dollar a year business, but that was not enough to, um, for the investors to expect a good return on their 30 million. In 2011, with strong support from Agilence Incorporated, who bought the assets of Vidian Systems, we started Agility Video LLC. We've been supporting SmartCatch, especially in the large Mont Montreal installation, and we've been refining it since. We've, we've especially been refining a patented feature, which is powerful and very useful, the tunable false alarm filter, and I will explain how that works before the end of this discussion. The largest installation proving the robust nature of the SmartCap software in the field is in the Montreal subways, one of the largest subway systems in North America. There are 68 stations. There are 270 plus cameras. They've been operating there successfully since 2009. And in the past several years, we've done $440,000 in contracts, improving it, integrating it with various things, uh, evidence that the customer is quite satisfied with it and continues to invest in it. Here's an example of the subway. This is a pretty straightforward detection. Human comes in the detection zone, recognizes the human after seeing there's a moving object there. Now this one's tough. Now it gets tough. The entire field of view is full of motion from the train. The lighting is changing all over the place. What we do is we stop caring anything about motion. We do not use a background model. We just take that one slice where the uh, walkway is and we turn on the human recognition software. And we can still determine there's a human there. Now let's take a look at a difficult case for false alarms. Sometimes larger animals can fool the smart catch into thinking it's seen a human being. We have here two dogs in the video, one larger one known medium size. If you look on the right hand side of the screen, that dog does fool the software and the software marks it as an H to say that thinks it's a human being. But notice on the lower right hand side of the screen here, the time is 918. And you look at the upper right hand side and the most recently reported alert is nine o'clock. So we did not report that alert at 918, which is an incorrect alert. That's because we're running a filter, which knows the difference between dogs and human beings, and it filters out the dog detections. Let's take a look at how that works. The tunable false alarm filter may be used with many different kinds of benign events that still cause false alarms. In this case, we're looking at the dogs mistaken for humans. We take corrective action when we see this problem. Label 50 plus samples of unwanted dog detection, 50 plus samples of good detections. And then we command SmartCatch to build a background process, which will make a filter that distinguishes between the two sets. Um, then you take the result and you attach it to the video analytics for a specific camera. The, the filter is tunable. That is, you can use, you can trade off between sensitivity, detecting as many as possible of what you want to detect, versus false alarms that you would like to eliminate. The theory and practice of intrusion detection means that you cannot have 100% of all that you want to detect while never having any false alarms. But, in, but with this tool, you can make the trade-offs um, that you think appropriate. So when we told the uh, filter builder to accept 90% of the intrusions being detected, it would then eliminate 95% of the dog detections. If we tell it that we want more sensitivity, 95% of the correct detections detected, then we can still eliminate 78% of the incorrect dog detections. Agility Video is seeking partners to deliver this to a much wider population of users. We'd like to talk to security manufacturers who have product lines that would have synergy with this new tech, this technology. 
and we would like to talk to cloud-based video surveillance providers who might want to deliver a distinctive offering that would be something uh, much better than their competitors can deliver. And we'd like to talk to security integrators who have a lot of outdoor perimeter intrusion detection requirements. If you'd like to know more, please give me a call, send me an email. Thank you for your time in viewing this video.